All right, so that's an oil change in a nutshell. Uh, again, any questions or comments, concerns, please feel free to hit me up. Put your boat back together nicely, clean up. Don't be a slob. Don't dump your oil in your bilge and then overboard. Just clean it. Be a, be a good citizen. What's going on, people? Man, well, it's been a long, long winter. So you guys remember, last year I bought my first boat, SV Artemis. 1985 Catalina 30 tall rig. It's been a long, long winter with a lot of boat projects, but man, did we have some fun. Anyway, it's time to start enjoying the water. Now, don't worry, we're not going to lose focus on this channel. I just want to tell you that it's time for season three, time to start moving forward with a lot more fun on the water. But we do still have a ton of boat projects coming at you. So if you're new to sailing or want to just follow me on my adventures, I implore you to smash that like and subscribe. And man, I hope you guys really enjoy these videos. So, all right. So one thing we got to do here is we need to pump the boat out. So we just pulled over to the pump out and this is it. So if you've never done this before, get your key in there. I don't know why I'm actually showing you this, but get your key in. You can take your cap out. Mine are from 1985 and a little tight, and that might be a part of this winter's work. And I'm trying to film it and do it. Whatever, you don't need to see this part. So hold on. Then you walk over here to this fun contraption, and you're gonna go ahead and pull it out to the length that your boat is. So for me, it should probably be two. I'm gonna pull it over here. Oh, I mean, doing this one hand is terrible. All right, so we know that we are in line now. So I'm gonna hand this off to my daughter. And so one other thing I like to do is make sure that the fresh water is on, because uh, you'll see that in a second. But then you come over here, depending on your system, and you're gonna hit the green button and start it. Now being that sometimes this splatters on me, I'm gonna take off my brand new hat. I'll put it up there. What I like to do is I get it on, I feel like I got a good fit, and I slowly turn the suction. If you do it hard, it will splatter. It will go. But then you can watch all the nasty right here coming up. So we're going to do this three times. First, we're going to pull out all the solids, all the nasty garbage, and then we're going to put water down the tank until she runs clear right here. No, she was full. Yep, so you can see it's finishing up. It's good. And then we're gonna close that. Gently take this, place it right there. And now you grab your fresh water. Fill that tank as much as you can. So once you're done with the fresh water in the tank, you're gonna do this, you're gonna repeat this. How much do you fill it? I don't know, it's probably about 20, maybe. You're just gonna repeat this process until it runs clear. Oop, there's that little splash we were talking about. See, all dirty again. Let it go. And she is empty. How do you know when it's empty? Oh, uh, when it stops sucking anything out. Okay. A little plastic like window. Plastic or in oh yeah. Then we're just gonna repeat this again. A more this time. Now the third, uh, what we're going to do, so again, we get it down, slowly pull it, you'll feel it in your hand, there it is, boom, it hit, there's our water, now we're going to open it up all the way, she's running nice and clear now, so we'll just suck this dry, put the cap back on, and we're done, we the toilet for the season, get some pink antifreeze down in there, and we're good to go. I just gave it about. 15 gallons more water. See, it's still sucking pretty good. There it goes dry. Leave it on there for another second until it finishes. Try to get every ounce out.
thing. Always be a nice guy. Dip it in the water. Suck it clean. That way you're not giving someone your own filth when you're done. But that's it to pump out. Alright, so the last thing you gotta do is rinse this off because you don't know what may or may not have came out of there. Rinse off the side of the boat, hit the dock real quick just to be a good citizen. Before put that away, put your cap back on. Do not lose your cap. If you lose your cap, it's gonna stink. So I just use this key. Do now I just saw a really cool key uh, made by Mantis. I think I'm gonna buy one. It's uh, every key in one. I mean for everything. So that's done. Put the hose away. I know I got someone else coming in here in a second, so I'm not gonna do it, but if you are here by yourself, no one else coming in, shut the water off, because that's just good politics. And that's it, we're done. Coat's now been pumped out, we're gonna put some pink in. Hello. That's it. Okay, so we just pumped out the duty. Um, but one other thing I wanna do, just in case I go back to Florida, is I kinda pre, did I record any of that, Ash? Did I record me doing any of the water? Uh, Probably not. I pre, Drained all my fresh tanks. So again, one under the, la uh, the Ford V, one under this Lazarette. I drained them out, and there's not enough in there, but um, as you can see, we're still running pretty clear. We're pink to pink, so I only used four gallons because I feel like I get today. Uh, we got the foam, which is whatever, but I'm gonna need another four just for the fresh water system. But I did get pink into these and I got most of the water through. You can see the foam, that's, that's actually the antifreeze. So that's been done, but now we wanna do an oil change. I actually wanna let these run for another second, see if we get any pink out of them, or if we're just still, yeah. We're pretty much dealing with all fresh. So what happens is the, the fresh system has a lot of water in it, and that four gallons between the two tanks. Now last year four was plenty, but I never didn't use that tank. This year I'm using this tank as well. I mean, it stinks like antifreeze, but it's not pink enough for me. I want to see that completely red. So, anyway, we're running it all through. We're almost out. So I'm going to shut that off. Why bother stressing out the pump? But the other thing we wanted to do today was get the oil changed on the pink monster. So, um, as you know, your oil filter is right down here. It's black. I'll show you that. But the easiest way to do this is basically get everything off, um, meaning the cushion and the top cover and then make sure you've warmed up this engine. So right now we're at operating temperature at about 135 degrees. Oop, I still hear my water system going. Um, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use my sucker and being that the oil's nice and hot, I'm gonna be able to suck it dry. Then I'm gonna pull off the filter, put a little oil in there and be good to go. I only use Shell products. I am not at all affiliated with Shell but I use Shell products because it has zinc in it, triple protection, this stuff's just awesome. So I have five, well, one gallon, which is four quarts, and an extra quart, which makes five. And we're gonna go ahead and do this now, so check it out. So again, this is the one gallon, that is four quarts, this makes five. Now, if you read online, there is conflicting information. One says 4.3, one says five. So just keep checking your dipstick as you get close. And let me show you how we're gonna get this out now. The edge. One other thing you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to have a lot of shop rags, paper towels, etc. You don't wanna make a mess. One drop of oil in your bilge will for forever live as a slick. There's no way to get it all out. So um, you're just gonna to wanna to have that ready. Man, look at how dirty this thing has gotten just from one season. It's filthy. So that's gonna be a fun project this year. It's just all grit, dirt, yuck. So this door right here is gonna have to remain open. And the best way to do that is with a bungee. You're just basically gonna take it, lightly put a bungee to leg. Right up here on the kitchen cabinet and that should hold it. Emma, hold, hold. Uh, oh. Hmm, why are we not holding? There. Holding, see, now it's held open. Then, you're gonna come here and you're gonna put some paper towels down. I think I need, I don't have to do all this. I'm just a lunatic with the boat being a mess. And it's a mess right now, people, it's a mess. 
This is what happens when you have children. You're gonna pull this out. I always like to check my level uh, beforehand so I can get to the same. Now I know that I check this oil every time this motor runs, right? So that's important. I am at the F, if you can see that. I'm trying to see from the back. Yeah, you can see it. So there's the F. Oop, ah, I dripped oil. All right, so we know that we want to be back at the F. So now what we're going to do is the oil's nice and hot. There's our dipstick tube. We're going to get the, um, the vacuum basically set up now. So anyway, you get that pushed into there, which gives us the smaller diameter. This one sticks down into that hole. All right, so now that you have your tubes connected, you're going to come here and you're just going to insert this all the way down. If you think it's in, keep pushing. The only problem is if you push too far, sometimes it'll go down and around. Then, undo this, and just give it a couple pulls, and voila, look, there goes the oil. The magic of vacuum. Now, one thing to keep in mind here. This takes a while. This is not the easiest thing to do. Another good practice would be while that's happening, to undo the top. All right, so now we have the motor's ability to breathe. You might wanna place that down there so you don't get anything. But every now and again, you're just gonna give it another pump and just let it go. Now, if you did push this tube in too far, which might have happened, and I won't know yet, again, it'll go down and you up, and eventually you'll start sucking air. Just pull the tube back out a little bit, and then I'll probably put it back down towards the bottom of the pan. Also, look at those motor mounts. Oh, so pretty. So already twice, and I know magic of cameras, but I've only been doing this about three minutes, I started to suck air. So all I did was just pull the tube back out. Matter of fact, I could probably make it happen Push it, see, suck in air, just pull it right back out. And then you'll uh, be more towards the bottom of the pan. And you may have to adjust that a few times. And if that does happen, give it another pull, just to keep the vacuum where you want it. If you do pump it too many times, this will start to collapse in on itself, and that's no good either. You, you know, it's not gonna do you any good if you don't have any volume. She's already filling up pretty good. I'd say we got about a quart and a half out already. So while we're waiting for this to finish, um, again, I'm about five minutes in. Don't do this cold. Do not try to do this cold on the engine. Um, if, if you've already been pulled out and you're like, I gotta get it done, figure out another way. Because if you do this cold, you'll be here for like five hours trying to get that oil out. It has to be warm. Also, I know you heard me just mention about doing the pink and winterizing where the tanks are. There is a video right here that'll show you uh, how to do that. You just go right back in the system and you'll see them all winterizing. Oop, sucking air again. Pull it out another little bit. Um, and you'll be able to see a full winterization process for the Catalina 30. Um, I'm going to try to do some other boats this year as well. We're going to do um, an Irwin, and I'm going to do a Freedom, just to show you how to do those. So those will be part of the other series, which is what I'm calling Pearson. Um, but yeah, let me get back to this. So once it's done, what I like to do is A, I wipe off the hose, um, just because, again, you're trying to keep clean. And then I like to put my finger over the top and pump it. And then hold the hose up in the air and let the air pull it through. You do that a couple times. Um, just to keep it, the hose sort of clean. Now, that feels about right. That feels about five quarts. So what I want to do next just to be sure that I actually got five quarts out is now recheck the oil. So let's do that. All right, so we're down here, we take our dipstick, clean it off. That actually was the fastest I've ever pulled the oil out of any of these motors. And voila, it is empty. I will do it just one more time to verify. Pull it up, empty, perfect. So now we know we can go and do the filter and then start getting this bad boy refilled with oil. One thing to note, that's not your oil filter. That is a fuel filter. It's actually your secondary fuel filter. Do not turn that at all. But that's a whole nother set of issues that we can go over in another video. Also, if you are doing this in a Catalina 30, 
Um, I put it right back in the box and then I will run my hose up through the grab handles just to let it gravity feed back down in here so this hose actually gets clean. The M25 is in a lot of boats, but I'm sure you have grab handles or something you can tie it to and you'll be good to go. The fun part now, All right, see where that filter is? It's a pain in the butt to get to. So what we need to do now is sort of figure out how we're going to grab it. So we're not grabbing it there. Alternator sort of in the way. You're going to have to reach down in here and twist it off. And this is where you can make a lot of mess, right? So we're going to pack that down there with a ton of paper towels. All right, so there's really no way for me to show you this. I'm going to attempt to by moving this to here. This lets go. I'm going to be in trouble. Hold on. Let's see. Uh, so we can make it work. All right. So there's the filter. Let's look. Uh, yeah, I right. think you can see it. So this is gonna be a nasty mess. Trick is to not, it's already leaking. Yeah, oh, ooh, it's leaking bad. Get that shoved in there. Got it. You're going to make a mess doing this one way or another. But there she is. Now we're going to put some paper towel on it. Put it right here. Did a pretty decent job. I did spill a little and it's still dripping. So I'm going to get the new one on right away. Take the new one. This one's actually a little bit bigger, but it should be no problem. I'm a little nervous putting it in dry. Just give me one second. As always, we put a little bit of oil around the gasket. And then I'm going to drop in just enough so it doesn't leak on me while I'm changing it. But just a little. Okay. Now we got to get this on. Give me one second. I don't know if you guys can see me getting this on. Oh, there it is. She's all oily. I hate oil. Hate it. Now, let's get a spinner. I'm actually going to come around from this side. Nope. This is the tightest corridor ever. Oh, there we go. She's spinning nice now. I'm so upset. Even a drip of oil in here upsets me. It's uh, spent so long de oiling it. And now, we got oil in here. But we're going to clean it up real good. And I have a shop vac. Highly recommend bringing a shop vac with you. And when you're done with oil, always recap. And my daughter's back. Yay. Okay. So, there we go. Clean that as we turn it. And she's on. I'm just going to tighten it. So you have to get your filter nice and snug. Now, I got this filter to match this one. But I'm not feeling very good about this filter. I'm going to take this one home with me, but first I'm going to drain it. All right, now we're going to go down, pull out all the paper towel that we put in. And thank God we did. We caught all that. And I can see a tad of oil down in there. So give me a second while I clean that up. Some on the block. So you don't need to watch that. Well, all right. So now, I know most of you won't want to watch this. But if you're a first-time boat owner and you're trying to learn how to do an oil change, this is pretty easy. I put my dipstick back in. I put a funnel. I've actually removed this uh, cushion and I'm going to take the oil and again I'm using 15W40 T4 triple protection shell Rotella. So this is four quarts. So this is absolutely going to take the entire thing. So dipsticks back in, oil filters on. We're going to put in the four. Drink. Drink. Yeah. And mind you, your boat, your choice. This oil did not need to come out. Uh, there's only 20 hours on this engine. But it's a brand new engine, right? So we're not going to play games. That's the break in oil. That's now gone. Don't need to worry about it anymore. We're going to put this in, and this should be good for an entire season, almost two. If you put 20 hours on a season, I would say you're good for 
a hundred hours on an oil change. My generators, which have similar engines to this, I don't do for 240, so that's 10, uh, sorry, that's two weeks of straight runtime. I'm sorry, no, I'm sorry, that's 10 days. I'm not thinking right. 10 days of straight runtime, 24 hours a day, and that's 240 hours, and that's actually not even required. Um, I'm supposed to do them at like 420, but I try to keep the gens in the best shape as possible. Now this is little Kubota is not running at full load. Um, it's if you go 100 100 hours, no problem. If you're running 100 hours a season, maybe you want to do it. I mean, an oil change costs you 40 bucks to know that you have good oil in your engine. I think that's a good idea. So anyway, we got four quarts in here. I would now want to just go ahead and check the oil again. So let me do that. All right, so I checked the oil, and even with four quarts, it looks to be a little over full. It's just above the F. But we haven't run any of the oil through the system. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put everything back together real quick. And I'm going to go ahead and start it and let it run for a quick second. That'll also help me check my filter to make sure that the filter's not leaking. And then we'll check it again. There may have been a quarter quart left in. I don't, I don't think so. Um, I think we just got to push it through the system. So let's go ahead and start the engine and see what happens next. All right, so I just ran the engine for about 15 seconds. We're going to check the oil again. I also opened this up, used a flashlight, checked to see if my filter was leaking. Filter seems good. I'm just going to run a finger underneath it. Yep, she's golden. And now I'm going to go ahead and check the oil one more time just to verify that we have the right levels. Well, all right, so we filled it. We ran it. We checked it. The levels are within tolerances. A little bit full. There's probably just a little bit of oil left down in there, but I only ran it for about 15 seconds to do my check, so we'll give it another little bit and we'll see what happens there. But she's a brand new baby, so having a little bit of extra oil in there, and I'm talking like minute amount won't be a problem so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna clean this all up we're gonna run it for a few more minutes we're gonna recheck the oil just to verify check the filter one more time make sure it's not leaking from anywhere around the gasket you can feel underneath so we just wiped it off underneath because when we put it on right a little bit of oil would, would spill out then we're gonna clean the bilge vacuum everything up and we're done uh, this oil will now be good for at least 100 hours in my book I might even run it a little bit longer you just keep checking it and making sure it looks good and um, yeah, again, 40 bucks to do an oil change versus losing your motor. So that's up to you. I think doing one a season is perfect, but if you're running, you know, only 20 hours a season, I think you can go two. Just make sure you keep up on your levels. If you're running a lot more than 100 hours in a season, I would, I would definitely do one a season. But I hope this was helpful. Any questions, comments, or concerns, you can always ask me on this, um, and we'll go from there. Okay, we're just going to let it run for a few and while it's running. I always like to check my water output. Looking good. Doesn't hurt to bring the RPMs up a little bit. And while that's happening, go down and check to make sure it's not leaking. All right, so that's an oil change in a nutshell. Uh, again, any questions or comments, concerns, please feel free to hit me up. Put your boat back together nicely, clean up. Don't be a slob. Don't dump your oil in your bilge and then overboard. Just clean it. Be a, be a good citizen. Say hi to Tom. He's been making a lot of appearances in these videos. Anyway, we're good. We're done. Um, oil levels are golden. I have my seacock closed, I hope. I'm going to actually have to recheck that. And um, yeah, we're good for another season. I won't change this. I might have not even change it next year. It all depends on how much we motor. But again, remember, 100 hours should be more than ample. You could go 200 hours and you still wouldn't be stressing that, that oil out. All right. So hope you guys enjoyed. Cheers.